This is Andrew Cardozo, and I'm talking to Matt DeCourcy, who was the Member of Parliament for Fredericton, New Brunswick from 2015 to 2019. Uh, Matt, thank you for doing this. Let me start by taking you back to when you started. What inspired you to run in the first place? Well, thanks for having me, Andrew. And uh, I, I guess my story goes back quite a way, uh, coming from a family that was always inclined towards current affairs, community engagement. Uh, come to find out later in life, I had you know, a family that was actively involved in politics, right from my grandmother through my father and his sisters. Um, and, and I told people coming out of the 2015 election, uh, where a lot of their children took an interest in watching the dynamic locally, that I could recall in 1993, being a 10-year-old, watching that election take place and being fascinated by the figures and the, I mean, the issues as much as a 10-year-old would understand yeah. them. Um, and watching at that time in a change election, Andy Scott be elected for Fredericton. Um, fast forward to my first and second year in university at St. Thomas University. Um, I got involved uh, through Andy with the Young Liberal Association in New Brunswick as part of the Paul Martin leadership. And, uh, and that was my introduction to, to partisan politics. Uh, volunteered throughout university, was engaged at the at the campus level and, and some other national activities, and then came to work for Andy in Ottawa in 2005. Spent some time with him, and then with Todd Russell, who was the member of parliament for Labrador at the time, before going back to school, going on to do other things, both in New Brunswick and abroad. Um, and in 20, um, the end of 2013, started to think legitimately about wanting to run for office and that fire had been built over the years and, and looked to the now Prime Minister uh, at the time leader of the Liberal Party who was talking about the party needing to be um, more outward focused and engaging of the broader community which is a feeling that I had thought about a lot as well had wrote about in my master studies oh, yeah. about the need as political <laughs> communicators to be outward focused uh, and not just inward focused on, on the party dynamics. So uh, with the encouragement of my family, I uh, jumped in, in in April of 2014, ended up taking a year and a half leave in total, but ha ended up on leave from my job for five and a half, six months, r running for the nomination in a competitive nomination race was successful there and that remains one of the highlights of, uh, of my political time so far. So it was a hotly contested nomination? It was a hotly contested nomination, a large nomination, lots of energy and uh, we were able to win it and uh, celebrated well that evening in November of 2014 and then started knocking on doors on January 8th in minus 25, yeah. 30 weather in Fredericton. Knocked no. doors until October and was successful. Uh, you know, we were primed. If it was going to be a tight election, thought we could squeak it out, but certainly were carried by but the yeah, wave. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't a safe Liberal seat. It had been a Conservative seat for a long time. It had been a Conservative seat since Andy stepped down in 2008. Right. But had largely been a bellwether-ish type seat over okay. the course of its history. And uh, and then had the chance to serve the people of Fredericton for four years. Had some really interesting committee assignments, sat on the special committee for electoral reform as one of my first assignments, traveled the country uh, on what is an incredibly fascinating issue from an acad academic standpoint, uh, an incredibly frustrating issue from a political standpoint, um, and know that we took some, some significant heat for the decision that was ultimately made on that file, but a decision that I think was the right one. Uh, given the complexity of governing Canada, given the other issues that popped up onto the scene, like the election of Donald Trump in the U.S., and, um, and, and some of the other challenging issues we were facing, like tackling climate change in a meaningful way while still needing to develop our resources and move them to market. So that was a first interesting feat to take on, and then to serve as Parliamentary Secretary with Christopher Freeland um, in the Foreign Affairs role. Uh, and represent Canada on the international stage and bring Fredericton and New Brunswick and that flavor with me as I travel was something I'll never forget. Okay, can I, can I ask a little bit about Fredericton? 
Um, so you're the member of parliament. You're um, you're involved in Ottawa, so it's easy to get sucked into the Ottawa scene. It's very easy. And then you're also getting transported abroad on your foreign affairs kind of duties. How did you keep track of staying in touch with, with the riding? Well, I got back almost almost every weekend. It was a rare weekend that I didn't get back to Fredericton. And in those weekends when I got back, it was rare that I didn't get to the farmer's market early on Saturday morning and or to a service breakfast, whether, you know, one of the service clubs or a church breakfast. And then got out around the community to various events. So my weekends were full. I say that Saturday morning from, you know, 7.30, 8 a.m. to 2 in the afternoon might have been the busiest part of the entire week for me. Right. And relied on my office staff and on the people who I would consider trusted advisors and my family to keep a beat on things in Fredericton. Again, I learned that from Andy, who was known as an incredibly strong constituency member of parliament and held multiple um, cabinet positions right. throughout his tenure right. in office. Uh, but, but, but that is a challenge. And, and in the end, uh, to be blunt, you know, going on foreign affairs and then immigration in a role that is incredibly important to Fredericton, incredibly important to New Brunswick. Population growth and growing the economy through people and filling the labor gaps that are there and um, looking at that as a key economic driver of our long-term stability and success in the region is incredibly important. And that had me present in a different way as well. In the end, none of that really counted for a whole lot in the 2019 campaign, as it turns out, um, which leaves me with something to ponder about the value of, of being around for constituents if they decide that uh, they are not pleased with perhaps policy or decisions or some of the things that get yeah. you know, happen in Ottawa that get communicated to them. What, what do you think were the big issues? Well, I mean, you knocked on all those doors. Yeah. What were the handful of top issues that people were concerned about? Well, I mean, the issues are certainly affordability and, and, and having a, uh, a comfortable lifestyle and, you know, have one being able to, to work and live and provide for their family and see that opportunity for their children and grandchildren. That, that is certainly one. Seniors' issues are prominent in that part of the country. Um, and, 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 I mean, climate change is an issue, but uh, I, I don't think it is so much more... A focus than some of the other issues that um, that it is the reason the Greens were successful. Healthcare, tremendously important issue. Access yeah. to a doctor, yeah. mental health services, home care, the implementation of pharmacare. Those are important issues to people. Um, to be blunt, I don't know if that's how people ultimately make made their decision when they voted. I think they made their decision based on other. Emotive issues and, it, and, and it was a close. Issues. It was close between uh, the top three candidates, right? It close, so, so it I'd, could break it, either way. In, well, in, in, a the, close in election. the end, it really broke green. Uh, yeah, we lost ten thousand votes. Voter turnout was on par with where it was last time, and uh, and I lost ten thousand votes, and the green, uh, the successful green candidate gained ten thousand votes. So there was a real big swing there, and the conservatives yeah. up a slight bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I take you back to your uh, time at Foreign Affairs? Yeah. Um, one or two things that you found particularly interesting when you were out across the world representing Canada? I, I will never forget walking out of the UN Security Council. Um, I, it, was, it was a constituent a week that we weren't sitting in May of 2018. And uh, I was going down to the UN for the day. Flew out of Fredericton in the morning through Montreal to to New York, got there, got picked up, got went to our mission in New York, got briefed, and I was to speak in front of the UN Security Council on the issue of um, holding responsible perpetrators of significant humanitarian crimes right. with a significant focus on what is going on, what was and continues to go on in Myanmar uh, to the Rohingya population right. there. And I, and I think it didn't hit me the significance of what I was doing, where I was, and 
and that someone from Fredericton was there speaking on behalf of the government of Canada until I walked out of the room. And that's why I, I say leaving the UN Security Council where I realized that was, that was pretty cool. That was, a, that, yeah. was a, that was a neat thing to, to do and to be a part of. I had the chance to travel lots of other regions, but other than that, um, a visit to Ukraine, to Kiev, uh, in August of, of 2017 for their Independence Day celebrations, which involved a, a large ceremonial parade where members of nine other uh, allied forces marched with the Ukrainian military. And to see that Canadian flag uh, be, be held up with members of our forces in that parade was something quite special as well. And I was only on the ground in Ukraine for 36 hours, but um, had an opportunity to get a really good broad flavor of the current situation there and just how important that stability in Ukraine is for for the Western uh, Western countries of the world and, yeah. and, and, and our ability to, to defend that country against Russian aggression is, is such a an important uh, actual but also symbolic um, issue and place in the world right now to, to yeah. hold together the rules-based order I recall you were in Africa for a del uh, representing Canada as well. Yeah, I spent uh, I spent time traveling through five different countries in Africa, which was nice because I had had a footprint in Western Africa uh, in previous development work that I had done right. in, in a tiny little country called the Gambia. I had gone over there, uh, I guess nine years ago now, to spend about a half a year doing health education work and capacity building with a small NGO that received funding at the time from the Canadian International Development Agency and uh, to go back for a third time to that country and to visit with that organization and to see the other dynamics on the ground and to travel to some of our other francophone allies in Western Africa, Senegal, uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire and then travel to Cameroon and down to South Africa was, 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 was really special. Yeah, yeah. And, and to represent the government of Canada at uh, Winnie Mandela's funeral. Oh yeah. She, she happened to yeah. pass away just as we were taking off, and we extended our stay in Africa so that we could have an official delegation there uh, to pay our respects. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, at this point, you've done four years. Um, what are your thoughts? What are your recommendations to your colleagues and former colleagues about what they should do differently or do the same in Parliament? Well. My, my reflections in some way maybe speak to the the individual practice of an MP too, like we were chatting about before the camera went on, which is it takes time to situate oneself in the midst of this, to learn how to use your own unique skills and experience and perspective to bring it to bear on, on Parliament and on the operations of government. One of the geniuses of this place, and I tell people all the time, usually young people, right, is that who say, how do you become a politician? And I say, like, the genius of, of our democracy is that people can come to Parliament from vastly different uh, life experiences, and they should come with their own views and uh, skills and work together to, to do something good for the country. So, you know, pe people should, should figure out what it is they want to contribute and use their own way of doing it to, to help contribute to the building of the country. Uh, the second part of that is nobody gets anything accomplished in Ottawa if they don't work with other people. Mm. There's nobody I've seen come here and accomplish something all on their own. It just doesn't happen. Uh, which is why I see value in the party system because it provides an opportunity within caucus to, um, to collaborate, to compromise, to flesh out views. And it also allows an opportunity for parties to, to contrast and collaborate but there's nothing that prevents people from working across partisan lines as well but it frustrates me especially in campaigns when we talk about you know the need for more independence and uh, and and less structure in the party system and quite frankly I I've never seen anybody come here and get anything done alone without being willing to compromise with people who come from vastly different parts of the country with different issues 
um, somebody who, who won't in any way you know massage their view of things in their own community to understand how that could be helpful or harmful to someone in a different part of the country probably isn't going to be successful in the long term here in Ottawa. So they can get a bit of press coverage here and there but I mean, certainly if you look at the big items that governments have dealt with, they've come by governments, not by individuals. Of course. So. And, and they, they come with governments who can command the confidence of the House. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and, and that is an important aspect of this. No, no government is perfect, but, but they, they do their best uh, to, to do things uh, that are beneficial to Canadians. I'm, I'm a believer that the government is... is is, is an institution of good uh, and that um, you know the, the function of government should be to, to support Canadians as best as possible uh, those who try to say that moving government out of the way uh, and allowing people to to do their own thing uh, is not the view I share because we, we leave we ultimately leave people behind if government isn't there to ensure some level of equity in society yeah interesting well thank you for this and, and maybe this. I'll close by saying yeah. this, like my experience is one of somebody who uh, who had four short years really to be a part of this I'm only 36 uh, I feel like I've got a lot more life experience and knowledge to gain I still want to contribute I don't know if it's in elected politics again or if it's in some other aspect of life but um, are you going to take another run? Maybe, and maybe not. Uh, you know, I. It, it depends what the political landscape looks like. It, it depends what my family and personal life looks like at the time. It depends what other professional options are there. But again, I want to do something impactful that, that contributes to to the bettering of, of people's lives to my home community, my region, the country. I have an interest in seeing the international community continue to become more equal and more prosperous. So all of those are on the table, and I would say that nothing is off the table at this point. I mean, we're, we're about one month, we're at one month of the day right. uh, <laughs> after after this election. Yeah. So the, uh, that one month, uh, I feel much better than I did you know, the day after. So, uh, yeah, and it's really starting to put some thought into what may come next. Well, thank you for this chat, but also thank you for the four years you gave to public office because it's uh, uh, there are lots of highs, but it's 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 tough work that members of parliament do. We don't often recognize that. So thank you for your service to the country during that time. Thanks very much. Yeah, and it was a pleasure to chat. Pleasure. Pleasure is ours. Thank you.